All right. Uh, so exciting news. We have Grover and Linda Marshall doing our videos for this weekend. So uh, I've been able to visit them recently. I saw them on Tuesday and they were uh, no. we recorded everything through them. So that was great. And also we have a baptism this weekend coming or yesterday we did. So that was a ton of fun. Yeah, Chrissy, go ahead and mute everybody, please. Thank you. And if you aren't muted already, please go ahead and do that and move over to side by side view if you have that as an option. But we have a baptism this morning that we're going to show little Hadley Lutz, great granddaughter of Fred and Betty King. So let us begin our worship. Look at this, Grover and Linda, great to have you. Greetings from Grover Woods in Durham. We have been here now for eight months, yeah, something well, like that. Seven, I, guess. I, don't know. Um, I wish we could invite you in to see our apartment. But uh, no, vi no visitors at this point. But we are comfortably settled. Our kitchen is bigger than the kitchen in Portsmouth, where we lived before. Um, what else can we add? Yeah. Yeah, when you finish, hi, and I'm Linda Marshall. And this is coming to you, if you're hearing some strange noises, coming to you from the patio out front of Riverwoods, Durham, in a very nice fall breeze. So if you hear anything strange, it's probably the wind. <clears throat> um, as Grover said, we can't invite anybody in, so we're here with Pastor Tim on the patio this morning. Um, we moved at the end of February, and we're happy here. Uh, we're First of all, we're very safe because there are some pretty strict protocols for the pandemic, so we haven't been out and about, or as you know, we haven't been to church and, and various places or seen family for a pretty long time. So, but other than that, life is good. We have plenty of time. To, we can go out and about and walk, and we can go out in the world somewhat as long as we're careful where we go and about the protocols they have in place, and we wear masks and stay socially distanced. So it's all good. And we miss very much being able to attend services at Holy Trinity. We've missed that quite a bit. But I know we're all in the same boat with that. And one of these days this will pass and we'll be back there. So it's, uh, in the meantime, it's, it's good. And we're safe and we hope you are. And we, you know, we take walks, we read books, we watch as much television as we can tolerate. And we, um, you know, we, we just wish we were seeing our families and going forward, we hope it won't be forever. But for now, that's, that's it. And we're very much looking forward to we miss you all, we remember you all, and we will be very happy when we can be worshiping with you all again. So stay safe and well, everybody. Excellent. Marsha, Marsh Grover and Linda talk about they watch uh, every worship uh, on Monday afterwards. They have not been able to get on with Zoom, but they do watch it through our website every day afterwards. So our gathering hymn is We Will Praise You, John and Jonathan and Dot. I believe it's from this past Tuesday service. Sing the glory of God, all creation. 
winter snow works of God praise the Lord the winds that howl the thunders growl sing the power of your name we'll praise you with the sun and the moon with the sea and all that it holds earth and heaven sing the Together, let us confess our sins along with Marshall. As he's going to read it for us, you can follow along. Please join me in the confession of sin. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Receive God's forgiveness. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. As I said, we had a baptism. Um, yesterday in the sanctuary so here we get to watch that service so enjoy welcome everybody from holy trinity from the family of ryan and laura that are here to celebrate little hadley's baptism we have two other little ones here we have Etta and we have nora always what i like to do do you know what this is this is a baptismal font can you see what's in here go ahead put your hand in there what is that? Water. That's water. We're going to use this water to mark little Hadley's head with a cross to say that God loves her. Should we start marking you guys with a cross? Do you want to do that? Can you, I do that? Mark your head? Come here. God loves you. Do you want to mark your, your dad's head? Go ahead, dip your finger in and say, God loves you. Would you like to do that too, Nora? Go ahead, dip your finger in and go to your mom and say, God loves you and give her a cross. Can you say, God loves you? Perfect. You may not have heard it, but they said, God loves you. So we're here to proclaim God's love and promises, God's promise of love and forgiveness on Hadley this morning. So welcome. It's great to have everybody here. God, who is rich in mercy, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. 
Ryan and Laura, called by the Holy Spirit and trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Hadley baptized into Christ? If so, answer, we do. We do. As you bring her to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with certain responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures, and to nurture her in faith and prayer, so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and to work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Hadley grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, answer, we do. We do. Parents' job is never easy, Dave and Sarah, and so we ask people that we love and care for to help us in fulfilling these promises. So Dave and Sarah, do you promise to nurture Hadley in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, answer, I do. I do. To the people of God who are gathered here, family, and also to answer for the rest of the community that during this time we cannot be together. Do you promise to support Hadley and pray for her and her new life in Christ? If so, answer, we do. We do. Ryan and Laura, I now ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and to confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the... I'm asking your parents right now, not you. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's okay. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? And do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, answer, we renounce them. We renounce them. Together, let us confess our faith in the ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now's the time when we get to do your baptism. So normally I would hold her and I would do it, but during this time I'm going to ask you to hold her. Okay. So if you can turn her around and put her head over the font. And little Hadley, I baptize you in the name of the Father <laughs> and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh my gosh, she was perfect. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth. Cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Hadley with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. I can see her forehead one more time, little Hadley. You have been marked with the cross of Christ forever and sealed with the Holy Spirit. There is nothing you can do to separate yourself from the love of God. Amen. At this time, Dave, as I asked, we're going to light a candle. So what we, we do, right, normally on our birthdays, we have a cake, we light candles, we blow them out to remember the day that we're brought into this world. Something we ask you to do is on her baptismal birthday, September 26th, you again break out this candle and light it to remember the light of Christ that has come into Hadley. So Dave, if you could light that candle and hold it toward Hadley, but obviously we want to keep open flames kind of away from a baby. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Amen. And so what we do, if anybody has it open, you're more than welcome to join me in this, but we're on page 231. It's in the bold that starts off with, we welcome you into the body of Christ. 
you're all welcome to join me in saying that. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. That is our baptismal service. That crying came right at the end. So congratulations to little Hadley, Ryan and Laura, and all of Fred and Betty's family. We continue our service with the gospel reading coming from Linda this morning. The gospel reading today is from Matthew chapter 21, verses 23 to 32. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he'll say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. The Word of God for the people of God. Normally I have an image here. I really couldn't find one that I wanted to use or quote. I am going to share this this morning. Uh, I ended up not preaching from the gospel lesson. Um, I work on my sermon throughout the week uh, and end up going in and recording it on Saturday morning. Uh, but as I was working on it, as it got closer to Saturday and after I already met with Grover and Linda, um, I ended up wanting to preach on the epistle reading that was assigned for the day, which is Philippians 2, 1 through 11. So I'll end up reading it there. Um, so just so you're aware that I end up preaching on something different than what uh, the gospel reading Hey, good morning, was. people from Holy Trinity, whoever else might be watching. It's Pastor Tim, although maybe you don't recognize me because I'm wearing my collar, my tab this morning. We just had a baptism that you saw Little Hadley Lutz, great-granddaughter of Fred and Betty King, was welcomed into God's family this morning, whose God's promises were proclaimed on Hadley. Um, and so I wore my collar for that and continue to wear it now for the sermon. We were set up here in the sanctuary, so I'm going to continue preaching in the sanctuary. I appreciate all the kind words I get about the whiteboard. Hopefully you'll be able to get something from the sermon as well, even though I won't be writing on anything behind me. This morning, while we had the passage read from Grover and Linda about uh, the parable of the two sons, I wanted to preach from the Philippians lesson that was assigned this week. And it hasn't read yet, so I want to read it now. It comes from Philippians 2, verses 1 through 11. And this is what it says. If then there is any encouragement in Christ... Any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion, any sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, 
taking the form of a slave and being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of the Father. Again, this may not be from one of the Gospels, but it is good news. So the Gospel of the Lord, the Word of God for the people of God. Amen. So a little bit just about Philippians as I set the book down there. Philippians is one of um, a letter written by Paul in the, in the New Testament. There's 13 letters that scholars believe are, that are attributed to Paul. Scholars believe seven of them are authentic. Seven of them are actually written by Paul. Other ones, there's some dispute, maybe written by a student of Paul, something like that. But Philippians is one of the authentic letters to Paul. It was written while he was in prison, most likely in Ephesus, Ephesus and is filled with joy. Uh, Paul has a lot of different reasons for writing letters, sometimes for admonishment, sometimes because there's conflict in a community where he was. Paul had been to the Philippian community and had a great relationship with them. And Philippians is known as what might be called a letter to a friend or a fellowship letter or a family letter. It's filled with thanksgiving. It's filled with remembering the times we had <clears throat> and, uh, and, and encouraging one another. And what we get here is some encouragement from Paul to the Philippian community on how do we live with Christ within us? How do we live lives in Christ? Now that second part, and if you noticed it on, um, when I had it up on the screen as I read it, it was in, um, indented. It wasn't part of the regular way uh, most of the scripture is written. It's indented, and whenever you see something indented like that, it means it came from somewhere else, and it's probably some kind of hymn or some kind of poem. And so this part, Philippians 2, 6 through 11, is commonly referred to as the Christ hymn or the Christ poem. And while Philippians was written sometime in the early to mid-50s, so it was really written before any of the other Gospels, this part of Philippians 2, 6 through 11 is some of, if not the oldest scripture we have in the New Testament that is speaking about who Jesus is. They think this was part... <coughs> that um, was written maybe in the mid-40s or so, some of the oldest uh, scripture that we have. And it's also some of the most famous. You may not know it as well, but uh, I feel like we spent a whole lot of time during seminary and people spent a whole lot of time studying it. Now, it can be used in two different ways. So two schools of thought. We have theology, uh, theology, theo, God, ology, study, Theology is the study of God. And underneath that, you get a whole bunch of different types of branches, right? A specific one in which this passage is used is for Christology or Christology. Christology, right? So it is Christ, the study of, the study of Christ. And a huge uh, realm of academic study is the divine versus the human nature of Jesus, of Christ. And this passage, one of the oldest, if not the oldest passage that attests to who Jesus is, is used frequently in those conversations. I almost wanted to say argument because that's what they can devolve into. But in those conversations, and we'll say that, he was, as it says, um, not in human form, but became human, right? Became obedient even to the point of death. And so you can have a high Christology, you can have a low Christology. A high Christology means you start with the divine nature and you work toward the human nature of Jesus. A low Christology means you start with the human nature of Jesus and you work toward the divine nature of Jesus. But that's theology, that's how this is used to talk about theology, Christology. The other aspect, and I think is really what this is about, is about ethics. Ethics being, what are those principles that guide our behavior? You see, this passage, when it was written, 
It wasn't written with the understanding of, I'm giving you information about God that you can dissect so um, you have this deeper understanding. It does give you a deeper understanding, but not to dissect as if you know all the details of God. Rather, this passage, this 6 through 11, who took on human form and was obedient even to the point of death, was given out of what does it mean to be a follower of Christ? Not that we can imitate Jesus, we're going to fail, but what are those principles on how we lead our lives and treat one another and treat ourselves and how do we make decisions, right? That's what ethics is about. So it's to help us guide those things. I think this whole passage is, don't regard others better than yourselves. Sometimes, Hymns, poems, artwork does what language cannot convey. Straight written language or straight academic language or straight thesis writing or explanations. It's really about something bigger, something better. It's not about the details, but it's about what it's been trying to convey. One of my favorite stories, if you go in any Bible, New Revised Standard Version, I'm just going to open this one up and you go to the beginning of it, uh, there is a section called To the Reader. It's it's in all the New Revised Standard versions. And in it, it is a letter to the reader from the committee that put this translation of the New Revised Standard Version together. And so it's in all of them. And it was, this letter was composed by Bruce Metzger, who led the committee on the translation of the NRSV. And I love uh, this conversation I read about with Bruce Metzger. I mean, just writes a brilliant mind, led the translation of the Bible uh, from the oldest manuscripts that we had into what we now currently read have as, as the NRSV. And he was asked the question once, from all your studies, what is the most important thing that you have learned? from it, right? What do you take from it? And he could have gone into a big diatribe over, you know, well, this is who God is. This is systematic theology. This is the Christology, right? And list all these things, right? To needs that we have. Jesus loves me. Now, I don't want to say, I want to make one correction to the song, Jesus Loves Me, because I heard it from somewhere else, is that it's not about Jesus loves me. It really should be Jesus loves us. That Jesus loves me was written in a very individual time in the world, and faith is so much about community, and so it should be Jesus loves us. So listen to these words now as I sing them, but I put in us instead of me. Jesus loves us, this we know, for the Bible tells us so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but God is strong. Yes, Jesus loves us. Yes, Jesus loves us. Yes, Jesus loves us. The Bible tells us so. That I find more powerful than almost anything else. A simple song to convey what can be a very complex idea. That's what Paul is doing here. Complex, it can be very complex. How do we treat each other? How do we make decisions? What are our ethics or our guiding principles? 
And Paul encourages them in simple ways. Now, we don't know this poem. We don't know this hymn. So we can't really quite maybe grasp it with the depth of understanding that they had then. But I think we can understand the idea. Paul uses a hymn or a poem to convey this complex ideal idea. Be humble. Treat others as better than yourselves. Look at what Christ did. No, you can't be like Christ, but remember Christ is in you, so you have a way to guide you. Do for others what is best for them. Seek their best interest. And in doing so, we trust that that will also be in our best interests. Turn away from selfishness. Remember we talked about that being sin the last couple of weeks. Sin is being turned inward, being focused on myself. What's in it for me? How do I benefit? Love is being turned outward. Love is seeking the interests of others for no other benefit except the other. That's what God did for us. That's what we're asked to do for the world. And we have the ability even though we will fail at times because Christ is in you, Christ is in me, we are in Christ. So may you know you are loved. May you know God has lifted you up. May you know that God has given you abilities beyond what you realize to love the world. Amen. All right. We are on to offering. Again, I apologize for the hiccups there. Um, I don't know what, was, what happened, but we'll just have to deal with it. As always, thank you for your offering. Uh, keep going, um, giving as you are able. We're coming up on stewardship, so in about two, three weeks, you will receive an annual stewardship packet with your estimate of giving card for 2021. So just be on the lookout for that. And we're going to start seeing some videos starting next week of what's going on in the larger church. Because we know when we give what happens within our building. But we don't always know what happens uh, that the larger ELCA church is doing. That when you give, you are supporting those things as well. So we're going to see some videos over the next few worships on how your giving impacts the larger church and the world um, all over the world. Not just our local community or not just in our own country. And we continue with our worship, prayers of the people as John, Jonathan, and uh, Dot again sing for us. Please use the chat feature to share your prayers.
Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the day. Even though we do not gather as we wish, we know that your love and grace and forgiveness can come to us through any means. So give us the strength to persevere. Give us patience. Give us wisdom. Give us the ability to do what we think is right, knowing that we may never fully know the answer. We lift up all these other prayer concerns to you now, all these joys that were listed, the ones set out loud or the ones kept quiet in our hearts. In your name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. During this time of being physically distant, may we remember God's promises of love and forgiveness are not planted in our actions and abilities. They are firmly planted in God's action through the Holy Spirit. We have gathered for worship in the past, and we heard the words blood of Christ shed for you and body of Christ given for you. Those words are as true today as they were the first time you heard them or the last time you heard them. God's love and forgiveness comes to us through the word and sacrament, through a time of exile from the church building. As we fast from the sacraments, may we rely solely on the word of God to do what it says, love and forgive. Grover and Linda lead us in the Lord's Prayer. Please join us in the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done, done on earth, earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our sins as we as forgive those who sin against, who sin against us. us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Our announcements, we still have our outdoor gatherings going on Tuesday at 7 and at 5. So this is a picture from our gathering this past Tuesday at 7. Photo courtesy of Jonathan Bach, beautiful photo. Uh, so thank you for taking that and sharing it. Remember, if you come at Tuesday, more of a family-friendly type service. We'll learn a camp song. We do what's called the Faith Five, and then we bring dinner and eat that together. So hopefully people can join us. Remember, all ages are welcome at either of those outdoor gatherings. So please join us for those. Sign-ups are on our website, and they will also be available in tidings every week. The pop-up pantry, there you can see Mark Beliveau packing the bags. I think that's from, I don't know if it's last week or this week, doesn't matter, but he's one of the regular volunteers for it, so thank you, Mark. Um, we are low on uh, cash, so... Two ways in which you can donate. Uh, one, drop off groceries. Great, do the shopping yourself. The other way is to donate uh, finances, and there are people that do go shopping each week. So uh, if you can donate, that would be great in either way. We put out, I don't know, 25 or so bags this week, and all of them were taken. So, um, you want to say, great job, it's going really well. But as you say that, it means people see it and uh, they're taking advantage of it, which is good, but it's unfortunate that people are in a position where they feel they need to uh, take advantage of it. So uh, please help us keep this uh, ministry going. And here are, if you're looking for things to buy, um, there's a listing of the foods that we need or that are needed or could be used. Birthdays and anniversaries. Hulk Hogan wishing everybody a happy birthday. And then who doesn't like a cat meme? So do we have birthdays and anniversaries we can share this morning? And maybe as those get shared, because it always takes a little bit to get popped up, 
Um, I'm going to move on to the next slide, and we will have our sending him on Christ. Uh, my hope is built on nothing less. So share those birthdays and anniversaries during our sending him. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. No merit of my own I claim, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fills his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anger holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath, His covenant, His blood sustained me in the raging flood. When all supports are washed away, He then is all my hope and say. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in Him be found, clothed in His righteousness alone, redeemed to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Malone, happy birthday. Ken and Judy Galley, happy anniversary. Happy birthday, uh, Deborah Wright's brother. So a lot going on. And to Dennis Berg's brother, uh, uh, oh, Matthew, brother Chris Berg, happy birthday. And Grover and Linda, bring it home for us. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. All right, everybody. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. I hope you have a great rest of the day. If you want to stick around for fellowship, stick on, uh, stay on. And uh, Chrissy will eventually, when I ask her to, put us in breakout rooms. Otherwise, we hope to see you uh, sometime in the near future. But it's great to see everybody's face, if not this way. Uh, it's better than nothing. So have a great day.